With your help, we can continue to fight for freedom. This is not possible without your generosity. Join our quest for the truth and our freedom. Simply visit www.realitycheck.radio forward slash donate to make a difference today. Now it's time for Cam's Buddies. This week, we'll find out what their best thing of the past year was and what they hope for in the new year. My producer has them all lined up and ready to go. Let's go for the final Cam's Buddies for the year. Good afternoon, Paul. Welcome to the last Cam Buddies of the year. Good afternoon, Cam. How are you this afternoon? Oh, I'm fantastic. Um, I've just got to thank you before we get started for your participation in Cam's Buddies this year. It's one of the most popular segments and we get plenty of comments about it. And that's all down to you and me and the other buddies all shooting the breeze and telling the truth. Yeah, having a chat. Oh, that's all good. I thought we'd just lighten it up a little bit for Cam's Buddies, considering it's the last show of the year and it's almost Christmas upon us. And I'd just like to get from you two things. The first thing is, what do you think was the best thing that happened this year? And it can be personal, it could be political, it could be anything else. And then what are your hopes for the next year coming up? That, that's, those are pretty pretty um, broad questions, but I'll give you a couple of things in the personal and the political. Mm. Um, I think one of the best things that happened to me this year was every Monday I have a lunch with a group of mates and yeah. we talk rubbish, we talk good, we talk different things. We have sometimes high emotion, we have high passion, we have laughter and we have mates that support one another and I think that one of the best things that happened to me this year was just having a group of mates that I can know, I can rely on, and I can go and have a chat with them once a, once a week and we've got each other's best interests at heart rather than your own interests. And as a group, having a group of mates when many people out there are sad and lonely and couldn't could count all their mates on one finger um, as opposed to one hand, and here we've got... 10 or 12 of us that knock around together, have a, have a bit of a laugh, have, have a meal together once a week and talk about the things that are near and dear to our hearts. And I think one of the best things that happened to me this year was that group's lunch on a regular basis to keep me mm. grounded and sane. Add to yeah. that. How long um, have we been night, having these lunches, Paul? How long have we been having it? It's got to be 20 years, isn't it? 20 years? I reckon every bit of. It's been... Well, it's just something that we do. I mean, um, I'm sure it was happening when I was in my 40s and I'm in my 60s. So, yeah. Well, the thing I'm is, very you, lucky know, it was. you know what I think is amazing is that, you know, there's a couple of us, people ring up and say, oh, can we have an, a, a meeting with you um, at lunch on Monday? That And my answer straight away is no. No, you can't. Unless I've you already got an appointment lunch. on Monday. I've already got an appointment, but you can come along if you want. And and yes. it's <laughs> and it's quite interesting the number of people who do actually come along and find out that there is this group of mates that will die in the ditch for each other. Mm. Well, that, that was one of the highlights of my year. And a small highlight mm. was I came home last night and for no reason my wife cooked me the, my favourite meal. And I said to her, oh, this is an absolutely delightful meal, darling. What, 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 what's happening? And she said, I just thought that you might like to have this meal. And I was thinking about you during the day. And so she's made me my favorite meal of all time. And it was just delightful that my family think about me and think about um, Mm. still liking me after I've been with her for um, 48 years and, and, and more if we go back yeah. to dating. Yeah, so, yeah. so that's, those are something that it's it just having someone that still thinks I'm okay after having lived with me for 48 years, that's another highlight, if you like, of my year. Yeah, it's stunning. Things to come, I think things to come that would be interesting is um, I'm really concerned that we don't have another lot of pandemic um, truth and Um, as the media see it rather than as reality sees it. Mm. I don't want to hear too much more of safe and effective. And so if if next year we had an inquiry, which we're intending to have, that had the parameters broadened out to see who was the folk that lied and why, 
who paid whom and why, and to get to the actual truth of the matter. Mm. And like when I'm hearing that there's a, there's a bloke at the moment who's going to be, um, he's being taken to task because he didn't run the whistleblower program as he should have. And he's said a few things and he's got information that he shouldn't have and saying that, um, and he's been sort of charged with some sort of propaganda that he's actually said that uh, um, vaccine has caused excess death. And um, how dare he say such um, lies and fake news and all this sort of thing. And it's it's only nutters that believe that and whatever. I think if we could get to the bottom of it, win, lose or draw, if the scope of an inquiry was brought out so that we, like if I'm wrong, I'm happy to know I'm wrong, but I don't like to be whitewashed. I don't like to be um, told that I'm wrong when I can see glaring holes in the argument. So what I'd like to see happen next year is that that inquiry being done at a level that um, all New Zealanders can get the information and the benefit from and know what exactly happened and was this safe and effective or was it a lie? And then we can somehow get the science back on track so that when science says something, it's true. And when media and PR say something, well, you know, that can we'll be just a whitewash or whatever. Yep. So. Take it under advisement. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, so, it's, so it's, it's, worth a, it's worth a peek, a, a peek. You know, I don't think we should dismiss the data uh, leak out of hand. I don't, I don't think – I think there's something there. Don't know what that is. I think we need to have a, a very rigorous exploration of the data and let's get all the data, not just the subset that – the whistleblower has has delivered. Let's get all the data mm. and let's analyze it all and get some serious, uh, you know, number crunches to have a look at it. Some, you know, some actuaries actually who know exactly about deaths and excess deaths. They would, I would think that they would be the the very best people. Go and pluck them out of insurance companies and get them to analyze it because I bet you they'll come up with an answer that'll be completely different from all the other vested interests that are around the place. Well, they'll come up with the financial maths answer that says if we now put your premium up in insurance, if you've been vaccinated four times, then and it's down lower for someone who's only been vaccinated with other vaccines but not this mRNA vaccine, then you'll know that the maths is saying where the money is, there's more likelihood of dying in that. And if they say, no, no, you, you're unvaccinated, your premiums are going up, and the vaccinated, you're going down actuarially, then we'll know, hey, we might have got it wrong. And I'm happy to be wrong, but I just don't like to be wrong with propaganda. I'd rather be wrong with facts. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. So that's you're what I'm have looking a look. for the new year. Yeah, we've just got to have a look. We've got to, we've got to actually be honest with the New Zealand public. And, and another thing I'd quite like them to have in there somewhere is, is ivermectin a horse tranquilizer and should it be banned? Or is ivermectin a study that is in fact that someone won the Nobel Prize for before curing terrible illnesses in humans? Because when you hear people saying, oh, you've taken a horse tranquilizer and no, you can't. If you ask a doctor, could you prescribe me um, some ivermectin because I've got scabies? They say no, we're not allowed to. I mean, hello. Well, it's it's ridiculous. Good. I mean, you know that that was stopped for ridiculous reasons. Same with hydroxychloroquine and and many other things that were relatively cheap and effective for for actually combating COVID. Um, we were told mm. lies. We were told well, lies were about that. Yes, and that, the reason we were told lies is because if you've got some emergency authorization use for some medicine it's only available as the emergency authorization is my understanding if there's nothing else well as soon as you've got something else that's effective then uh, hey so someone's paid money to have that happen is my belief i'd again be happy to prove be proved wrong if the inquiry had that sort of scope in it the, the government is looking at and i guess to be fair i'm pretty happy about the change of government even though um that's that's on a political level yeah, well, I, I'm just loving watching the freedom come bubbling back up into society where people could actually say Merry Christmas and not feel that they're being judged or 
that they're, you know, they're saying something sacrilegious and awful and we shouldn't be saying that sort of thing. We should be saying anodyne things like happy holidays or some other gay type of thing that, <laughs> that uh, you know, that doesn't actually mean what it is. It, this is Christmas. It's not mm. called anything else and uh, unless you're Jewish, in which case it's happy Hanukkah. Um, but for everybody else, um, especially those of us with Christian faith, it's Merry Christmas. Yes, and um, long may it continue. Absolutely. I'm just, you know, really enjoying watching this government on a daily basis announce that they've actually done something, like they've repealed this yes. act or they've done it, rather than coming out with slogans and saying we've, we're thinking about thinking about doing this, what we're seeing is actual actions and doing the things they promised to do. Yes, well, I'm actually really enjoying, and I, I obviously by saying what I'm really enjoying, I'm obviously going to give the show away because I must be a nut job. <laughs> but I really enjoy watching Parliament TV and seeing people have a go at Winston, acting Prime Minister, and have him give some witty rhetoric that is, in fact, as it should be in such a chamber. And and I find this very entertaining. And I think Luxon couldn't have done better having Winston acting Prime Minister um, to take on question time. I think Winston is just a master of it. And uh, other than this last time, I've never voted for him, but I'm just watching this and it's giving me great joy. Well, hopefully there'll be plenty more joy next year. And uh, again, I thank you for participating in Cam's Buddies. And uh, I'm pretty sure the listeners think you're pretty awesome as well, Paul. <laughs> yeah, thanks very much, Cam, and hope everybody has a great um, Christmas. I think Christmas is a fun thing and it's good for families and may all the listeners have a great Christmas. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Jack. Welcome to the last Cam's Buddies of the year. Hello, Cam. How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm always fantastic. You know, even if I'm not, I'm going to say I'm fantastic. Perfect. And the that reason for that is no one cares how you are. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> well, in bloke world anyway. I thought yeah. we'd have a bit of a, it, a, it, a lighter note for the last Cam's Buddies. And before we do that, I'd just like to thank you for participating in Cam's Buddies. Uh, you're one of the favourites of the listeners. Uh, you know, some of the uh, of the staff at, at uh, Reality Check Radio, they always send me, I hope you've got Jack on. I love Jack. So you've got a whole lot of fans no, out there. To, you don't have to tell lies, okay? <laughs> I'm not. You know me. I never tell lies. We don't know, but mm, okay, that's interesting. Anyway, I don't know why they'd say that. Well, you know, because you're just a curmudgeonly old old bastard, really, who just um, gives his opinion and doesn't care what others think. Not that I don't care what others think. Um, really, I'm just sick of people being asked an, an opinion and not giving a true opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And on opinions, there's two things I want to ask you. First thing is, what what was the best thing that you enjoyed this year? And it doesn't have to be political. It can be personal. could be anything. Uh, and the second thing is, what are you hoping for next year? Well, the first thing is um, my daughter um, getting significant, significantly better in her health. Oh, Not that's fantastic. Totally, uh, better, but significantly better and of course in the new year I'd like that to uh, improve but um, that's on a personal note um, on a political note um, I can't remember anything much good being <laughs> last year um, this year I'd like to see several things happen imagine just recently Winston Peters um, went up to Fiji in a C-130 Hercules you've flown yeah. in one of those haven't you they're yeah, awful things you know, do I need to tell the listeners what it's like? It's absolute bedlam. It's horrible. You sit in the it's back awful. there. It's noisy. They're the most wonderful planes on the earth. But even hardened troops, that have, that's what it was designed to take, amongst other things, uh, they even complained in the Vietnam War about what a horrible experience it was being carted around on the back of one of those. And here we are sending our Deputy Prime Minister, a Minister of Foreign Affairs, to another country in a Hercules when we've got but private business jets they could have hired at a fraction of the cost of taking a Hercules up there. Now, tell me why that happens. Well, and there's, also, there's um, two, the reason, price, there's two reasons for that, Jack. Um, now, Winston was flying into Suva. Now, Suva's runway is 6,000 feet long. Yep. Right? It's very short. Like Nandy's, 11,000 feet. 
So a a seven five seven can't land at Suva, and if you land at Nandi, you've got a three hour drive to get to Suva, which is a ball lake. It really is. But I hear you. A C one thirty is an awful way to travel up to Fiji. It's it's nearly four hours in in the prop driven hippo. It's uncomfortable, and even if you've got uh, hearing protection on, the rattling and that goes on just jars you to your bone. Oh, so, the crashing of hydraulics and so forth drives oh, you to misery. I mean, to be fair, it's pretty I, good. I, pretty I good was up only, the sharp end. Yeah, Mate. I was only ever in um, Hercules for a very short time, and then they they'd open up the back door, and we'd all be told to get out at That's about five thousand feet. And you gladly did so. Well, yeah, it was better to be out and under the under the parachute than it was to be sitting in the Hercules. Yes. Yeah, maybe he got up the shaft end. It's not so bad up uh, in the shaft end, but who knows? They yeah, may that... not have had room. <laughs> no. I'd have to check my facts, but I'm sure we have a business jet um, on in the private arena that could get into uh, Suva. Oh, there's several. There's several that would do that. So, yeah, I agree with you. I, yeah. I've actually been chatting about that with, with some of my staff in the BFD today, you know, looking at potential replacements. And um, the, the the plane that probably makes the most sense, although range is a little bit limited compared to a 757 and capacity, would be the military version of the 737 that was uh, designed for freight and passengers which is used by the U.S. Air Force, the Army, and the Marines. Uh, I think it's called the Clipper, but it's basically well, a. That'd seven... be good, but, but why don't we just hire a local or charter a local uh, aircraft? Go, I think a Gulfstream um, or something like a that. Probably Dassault Falcon. Oh, I think we have Dassault Falcon Sevens. Faster, fly higher, fly faster, and they're sitting there. And it's a no-brainer. Our Prime Minister should be thinking about that going over to uh, Australia soon. Apparently, there's a bit of a dilemma there. Um, I mean, we would save so much money. Yeah, I mean, the reason why I suggested a 737 variant is because we've got the P-8 Poseidons, which is the same, obviously, the same um, platform. And so the skill sets are transferable between the two two aircraft. But, but yeah, point taken. It, it, this should not be... A difficult decision to make. We we should have our people going overseas representing us in decent aircraft, not some you know th- something you pile pallets in and push them out the back. Well, it sends a signal to the people they're going to visit that uh, New Zealand's impoverished and they can't even afford to send them over in style. I'm sure if they did a deal with a local uh, jet owner, they could even have you know New Zealand government or something written on the side to make it look at least reasonable. Well, you know people who can do that, don't you? I do. <laughs> Maybe. Well, I'll tell you yeah, what. Another, what how, another how about I put you in touch said, with Winston and get him, get you to sort out his um his flights for him next time? Well, I think I could do that. Maybe you should. Mm. But um, on another note, I think we should just devolve the CAA and do what China does. Just go with the FAA, the Federal Administration and um, just pay them a fee and save zillions of dollars and deregulate so much stuff that's rubbish in this country. Well, maybe I need to put you in touch with David Seymour because he's the Minister for Regulation, and uh, he, he, I'm sure he would love to be able to take an axe to the CAA. Yes, well, he's probably got a hell of a lot more on his plate, but I'd like to see him get in there as well. Good luck, I say. <laughs> I'll, I'll eat him for breakfast. Ah oh, well, you know, um, he's he's not new anymore. He's uh, wise to the no. uh, to the to the behaviour of the civil servants and the bureaucrats, and you know all those perennial people who seem to always um, stay there no matter which government is in. So um, you know, we'll just set them loose on on yep. the CAA. That would be fun just to watch for just for the, the uh, yeah. giggles that'll come from that. You- can you tell Winston to tell the Prime Minister to, to stop doing stupid things like getting the government to pay to learn to speak Maori? It's not that he can't afford it. All it does is bring in headline news and takes the real issues away from what we want. We know that it's peanuts and it's nothing, but he doesn't understand that really, if he'd have just paid for it himself, that would have been a better headline. You know, the stupid thing is, is the media have um, the media have twisted that because that's the same courses that every MP can avail themselves of. So it's not something special. It's not something that's funded um, in any different way. 
he wanted to learn to Rio because he's woke. Good on him. But yeah, I agree with you. Pay for it out of your own pocket. Um, and don't, don't. Yeah, you know that and I know that. But he's got to stop drawing attention to himself for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't often look in the mirror and, and reflect on where the cause of the problems are coming from. It's just young and inexperienced. Tell him to go talk to Winston. Everyone's young from where you're looking at it from, Jack. That is true. <laughs> Don't remind me. <laughs> hey, hey, when you know all of your specialist doctors by their first names, you know you're getting old. Oh, dear. Or, or what about when you outlast the doctors? I've, I've outlasted several. <laughs> <laughs> Don't remind me. Yeah, well, you can't kill weeds, Jack. No, you can't. That's true. Well, once again, I just want to thank you for participating in Cam's Buddies. It's been a real pleasure having these chats, and I know the listeners really love it. So thanks a lot, and we'll we'll crack into this again in the new year. And Merry Christmas to your family, to for yourself, and uh, and a Happy New Year as well. Yeah, my pleasure, and um, Merry Christmas to you. And if we can catch up over the Christmas break, let's do it. Yep, sure. I know where you are. You do. <laughs> All good, Jack. Thanks very much. See you. Bye-bye. Good afternoon, Marcus. Welcome to the final Cam's Buddy for the year. Wowzers. We've made it another year. Another year. It's been fabulous. Hey, look, um, I saw your photo of your little goodie bag that you got um, from your cigar vendor today. I'm going to have to come over and see you. As soon as I get through this week, uh, we've got to catch up because uh, I'm going to help <laughs> smoke some of those. They look, They look superb. You'll have to hurry, mate, because you know what I smoke cigars like, like, like they are, I'm a hoover on the end of it. So, uh, well, you've got yeah, a special you'll, you'll, one for You'll me. need to hurry. You've got a special one I've for me. i got a special me, one. Oh, yeah, sure I have. Yep, yep. It's very special, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm from, I am from West Auckland after all, so. Oh, so. Oh, no, we are, we uh, are uh, cigars, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, that's is right. It, it's I not forgot. Cuban, is it? I hope it's not a dog rocket. No, 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 it's not Cuban, mate. Wouldn't do Cuban. No. I wouldn't, well, I wouldn't do that to uh, one of our mutual friends. No, exactly. What I wanted to touch <laughs> base on with this, Cam's Buddies, for the final one for the year, first of all, to thank you for participating. Um, the, the listeners love this segment. Uh, they love everything that, 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 that you guys say, um, the truth bombs that keep dropping. The one that wonders never see, say they like us. Yeah, exactly. Well, we're likable people. But uh, what I want to <laughs> ask you is what, what, what was the best thing that happened this year for you? And it can be personal, mm -hmm. it could be political, it could be business-wise, whatever. Whatever um, rips your undies on what, what's been great this year. And then the second question is, what are you looking forward to for next year? Well, that's, um, that's, a, that's a tough one. It's been an interesting year. It's been a good year, actually. Um, I've, I've had a good time. Um, probably on a personal note, the, the best thing that happened for me was I was allowed to go back to USA for a trip. Mm. Um, because they, they ban unvaccinated people for quite a period of time, and I think it was back in June or something this year. Um, they lifted, or May, I think it was, they lifted the ban on um, non-vaccinated people coming across here because I'm married to a USA girl, so she could go back any time, but I couldn't. So that was good going back there. It had been sort of three years or something, and I've got a young fellow who hadn't seen that side of the family. So it was really nice being able to um, travel again, and we... We had a great trip. We did a big road trip across the USA from LA across to Illinois. So um, saw eight national parks on the way. Had a play with, fantastic play, time. Play with any guns? Played with lots of guns, yep. Um, my father-in-law has a good variety of different types of firearms, some that are interesting on their own. He's, he's actually, the, the one that had the biggest kick was a, um, a flare gun, believe it or not. Yeah. Had a flare well, gun there that we were shooting up in the end. It's like a double shotgun shell. It was like a missile. Yeah, 37 millimeter or 40 millimeter. Uh, usually 37 oh, if it? they're an older one. Yeah, it was, it was a, a, a some German brand. I, I can't remember, but man, that thing had a kick. It was mm. good fun. Um, and then obviously all the AKs and that sort of thing. He had a variety of different AKs, pistol grips, all sorts of things, and shotguns, and yada, yada, yada. So we were blowing up ten right over there at his place. So that was always good fun. Um, which is illegal over here, apparently. You can't yeah, have that. You, you know, can't have Tannerite in New much Zealand. Fun. Too much fun. You could make Tannerite because it's very simple, but um, in buying no, the, you ingre can't. No, in, no, bu in buying no, you the can't. ingredients, you'd get in trouble. <laughs> and Googling it on, on Google, you'll get in trouble as well. well. 
well, yes, maybe. Yeah. Anyway, so that was um that was a good good thing that happened to me this year on a personal note. On a um political note, I'd say the best thing that's happened this year is getting rid of the um the nanny state of um what was before and um and showing those people the A class and that sort of thing that we've still got a voice at this point in time. Um, mm. And it was good to see that people used it, you know. Yeah, I'm sort of still a bit sceptical about the future with regards to that, but um, where we're going. But at least we've got, like we've talked about in the past, we've got a government that's making the right noises. Winston Peters is in there doing doing the Winston Peters things, and long may that continue. I say, I hope he doesn't get lost in the wind, and he keeps going along those promises that a lot of our, you know, our, our listeners want him to do. So. We'll, we'll hold him to the um, hold him to account on that one. So that was the best thing politically. I think that was really quite refreshing, seeing how much that flipped across that way. So those those are my two things that happened this year. You know, I've been watching Winston Peters for a long, long time, as long as I can remember, and he seems to yep. have some some fire in his belly now. Uh, I'm seeing a different Winston Peters from what I've seen in the past and the way he's acting, uh, the way he's reacting and the things that he's doing now are different, right? Like the, the, if you have a look at the, I'm pretty sure it was his idea to have the coalition agreements signed and published. He's, he's, he's less politician now, I find, I think. Mm, he's more statesman, isn't he? Yeah, he's more, he's more, uh, um, I don't give a stuff anymore. He's more like you and me. He's speaking the truth, and he doesn't care who it offends. He's basically saying, this is what I think, and this is how I'm going to play it. And um, it's working for him because I think people are sick of politicians. You know, They want people that are talking truth. They want people to actually get up there and do something. So I think it's working for him. Mm. I mean, he's, uh, it certainly is working for him. He's gone up in the polls I saw recently. Yeah, that's right. And um, Last two polls, the Roy Morgan and the Taxpayers' Union poll. So what yeah, do you want I mean, for next so, year? I, what do you want for next year, Marcus? Um, I want people to pay their bills, which will be a good thing for my business. Um, which I'm I'm not scared that they won't, but um I've had a good year business wise as well. Next year I'm hoping to get more of the same. Um I'm in infrastructure, so um we're doing large infrastructure road and jobs and that, and this government's obviously good for that. Long well, may that continue. Um on a personal note, we're we've got our um yacht all ready to go and we're looking at I'm going off for three months over over summer, um, just sailing around the North Island, and I'm working from the boat. So we're hoping that all goes well, and um, and then next year we'll we'll do a little bit more on our uh, home, um, invest a little bit more money in it, and hopefully uh, by the end of next summer we're off the marina for good. So well, that'll be that's um, um, that'll that's be old. spectacular, yeah, spectacular, right? And then just yeah. sail around New Zealand and see places that you can't go without a boat. Yeah, I mean there'll be plenty of places to go. Nice little coves. As long as have you got um, have you got yourself a, a Starlink uh, internet set up? No, I've got Wireless Nation at the moment, which is fantastic. It's it's good around New Zealand. Um, it's all Wi-Fi runs off the um, Vodafone slash. I guess that's one network now, is it? No, oh, no, that's Vodafone. Different. Anyway, um, it's good coverage all around. Obviously, not in fjordlands and things like that. But once we go blue water, we'll get Starlink. But I'm just biding my time on that because it's getting cheaper and cheaper and the service is getting better and better every day. So um, by the time we need it, it'll be well affordable. Mm. It sounds like you're going to have a fantastic year next year. Yeah, and smoking lots of cigars and drinking lots of whiskey, of course, as well. No, of course. What about yourself, mate? What are you looking forward to next year? Um, Well, I'm really enjoying the show. Um, Hopefully we can expand the show out a little bit, uh, maybe a couple of days a week. That'd be fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd love to be live and take some talk back, but we're not quite there on the technology yet, but I'd be looking forward to that. I really enjoy, mm-hmm. as I say, I really enjoy doing the show and uh, I'm just going to enjoy watching this government deliver things because they seem to be on a mission and it's refreshing yeah. to see that. And then hopefully I can sort out, you know, a few things around my personal life that would be a lot more happier. but. I'm mm-hmm. enjoying. I'm enjoying life. Um, you know, I'm getting uh, a whole lot out of life, and I'm enjoying it a whole lot more. So, um, as long as that continues, I'll be very happy next year. No, good on you, mate. I mean, I, I can see by um, what you're doing online and that sort of thing. You've, you've got um, 
your tail up and your head down and you're moving forward, which is great to see. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. We, every, everybody needs to have a little bit of a shock to the system so that they can sort stuff yeah. out and, and move forward. So, you know, I've been through that over the last five years, a bit probably a bit longer. I've taken a, a fair yeah. bit of punishment and I'm starting to actually enjoy life now. So, yeah, I just want to keep on doing that. Everything's temporary, eh? That's what I tell everyone who's in a bad spot or in a good spot. If you're in a good yeah. spot, just remember it's it's temporary. So just yeah. keep working hard all the time, even even if it's going well. And if you're in a bad spot, don't worry, it's temporary. It's going to yeah, get better. That's what I say to people who call me up and want to talk about their, you know, tough times or whatever, and they're feeling depressed, and some of them have been feeling suicide. And I always say to them, you know what? Just remember this, right? Suicide's a permanent solution to a temporary problem. That's right. Exactly right. Everything. Mm-hmm. And it, is, it, it puts things in perspective when you start realizing that everything is temporary. So things, no matter how bad they are or no matter how good they are, it's it's you got to remember the good stuff as well because otherwise you, you imagine the life's just going to be easy, you know. But, well, you know, life isn't easy. Life you've is be, tough. you got to be in an even keel the whole time, you know. Mm. I mean, you know, I get this in politics. People say, oh, if we don't do so, do this, we'll never get rid of this government. Well, I've been involved in politics for over 40 years. And um, you know, every three years we get a chance to toss them out, and we do. Yeah. And we've lived through worse governments. I mean, it was pretty bad under Ardern and Hipkins. You know, in terms mm-hmm. of financially, it, it'll prove out in, in history that what they did and uh, – was perhaps the worst management of the economy since Muldoon, maybe before. Mm. But we still voted them out. And uh, that's the thing. Nothing's ever permanent. There's, there, you know, eventually voters get sick of them. And it only took two yeah. terms to get sick of Labour this time. Normally, Boy, though, did they do some damage. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but you – here's the thing in New Zealand politics, right? I call it a game of two halves. We have an election. Mm. We get a government. That government, it gets to play – the first half of the game, which is three years. And they get to half time, right? And if they've played like absolute dorks, they don't get a second half. They're out, mm-hmm. right? And and we've had that happen a couple of times, uh, actually with Labour governments, but we've had that happen a couple of times. But, but most times a government will get to play the second half. And so they get through three years, another three years, they've finished their six years, And now we get to say, well, do you get to have another game? And if we don't like them, they're out. And again, invariably, if it's a six-year government, it's been a Labour government that's been tossed out. But by and large, most governments in New Zealand have lasted three terms. So they get to play a game and a half. And by the time they've finished the first half of the second game, people are over them and they don't get to play the full game and end up with 12 years. Keith Holyoke was the last person who did that. So it's a long, long a, time ago. That, that's why I'm a little bit sceptical about um, increasing to a four-year term because of what you've just described. Um, they do generally get another three years, which makes it a six-year term, so to speak. But mm. it's sort of like a check and balance in the middle of it all where people can say, oh, are they tracking correctly? Are they going right? And they get to have a say on it, and then they get another three years or they don't. And then after, I mean, anything after six years, in my opinion, is um, that's cream on the top for them. You know, if they're if they're able to stand for three terms, four terms, they've been a good government. You know. Yeah, I mean, three years is too short for a good government and too long for a bad government. Yeah, but the, the three years for a good government will be obvious. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So exactly. they'll get another three terms. So, exactly. So that, 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 it works out well. Yeah, we're on the same page there. So once again, Marcus, thank you so much for participating in Cam's Buddies. Uh, you're a, one of the favourites. In fact, they're all you guys are all the favourites, right? Everyone loves Cam's <laughs> Buddies. We were right? one of your favourites. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so I really no, appreciate you participating in this, and I wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Man, it's been a pleasure. It's been absolutely fantastic having a, um, a little bit of a whinge and a bit of a um, – debate online and, and, and sharing the thoughts and it's real good fun listening to the other guys as well and their opinions. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to be part of it, mate. And thank you and I wish you and your family a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and all that sort of thing and come over and smoke some of those smokes with me. Yeah, well, I'll have some time after this week 
So uh, we'll have to work it out uh, in between your sailing expeditions. Cool, mate. All right, mate. Thanks, Marcus. All right, buddy. Good afternoon, Jimmy. Welcome to the last CAMS Buddies of the year. Hello, Cameron. Good afternoon. The last one, the last oh. chance I get to rant on the radio. Yeah, the, la- the last chance. Uh, but before we do that, I'd just like to thank you for participating in CAMS Buddies. And, you know, you and I have been chatting on and off for coming up to nearly 20 years. Uh, <laughs> I know. It's you depressing know, how fast the time goes, eh? I mean, you were a cheeky, but a bit of a cheeky bugger, and I'd never even met you before, and I started getting um, text messages and then Facebook messages from you. I was thinking, who's this guy? And we met up a couple of times, and you know, every now and then we'd sit there and chew the fat, and uh, you know, we, we try and solve a few problems in the world. But I was just thinking about that, reflecting on that, how long you and I have uh, been talking to each other, and, and it would be close to 20 years. Yeah, yeah, it would be. It would be, definitely. Back mm. in the old blog days. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what's your topic today? All right. So I thought I'd just do something a bit nice and say what what's something <laughs> that you – what's something you that you – something nice. Yeah, what's something that you really enjoyed in the past year? And it can be personal, it can be political, it could be business-related, anything, right? Whatever it is, whatever, you know, got you excited and – made you thankful or or whatever. And the second thing is what your hopes are for the new year. And again, it can be personal or political or business or anything. Well, the best thing to happen this year was the total tossing out of Jacinda Ardern's government. I just <laughs> couldn't, it was just literally the best thing. It, it gave me so much happiness. And then, you know, watching this government c- come in, start kicking off all the policies that it promised it's just it's just been like such a relief, you know, like the last three years have been fairly hard mm. for various reasons, but then to see them just get thrown out at election and out and out of the country it just was just been fantastic, and then seeing the the meltdown from the opposition has just been the icing on the cake really it honestly couldn't New Zealand couldn't have coped with another another term. You know, I look you know, back. Financially I, or I look, yeah, I look back at the start of uh, of of this year, and Ardern resigned and and quit and vacated the country, and I hope she stays overseas forever. <laughs> but I I wrote an update on my most famous article, which is called yeah. the good the good the, the bad and the ugly. And if I look at all of the various versions of it that I wrote over a couple of years. Those versions have had more than six hundred thousand people read them. <laughs> yeah, such was the distaste for her. Yeah, absolute well, distaste that, from that, her. That blog, highly recommended reading. It's a, that's one of your best blogs, and I've read most of your blogs. Yeah, that's and the the um, outstanding. The funny thing was, is when Ardern resigned, I got a phone call from a well-known political commentator and and um, pollster who said to me. Cam, you can take a bow. You're part of the effort that got rid of her, and uh, you fought the fight uh, harder than most. And, you know, I thought, well, what? I just wrote a couple of articles, and I held her to account. Then there's other people that have done far more. And it depends on the eye of the beholder, but people that I admire this year who have done amazing things or done amazing things over the last couple of years – are definitely the three ladies who created Reality Check Radio and Voices for Freedom. They're true heroes. You know, you know all these stupid Kiwi Bank um, New Zealanders of the year. You know, somebody should <laughs> yeah. nominate them because they have been vilified, attacked, demonised, and I know what I know what that's like. But they've created an amazing community uh, of Voices for Freedom and this amazing radio station. And uh, I think that we maybe should look at hijacking one of those New Zealander of the Year awards and and, and having them uh, appointed a, a, as as a New Zealander. I mean, it'd be a hell of a lot better than Chanel Lal or the Pink <laughs> Walrus. Um, so hopefully those awards will stop being woke and we'll start actually uh, having people who have made a demonstrable difference for a majority of Kiwis. I don't think those mainstream awards will ever stop being woke. Well, it's run by the media. Just the mainstream media just won't happen. 
But the difference with your impact is you've got a big audience and you've got a loyal audience who read all your blogs and mm. you know. And I think that that's why those a lot of your blog posts because you would have had a lot of blog traffic during the Arden regime. Oh, huge amount. Blogs. Yeah, a huge amount during and the lockdowns. Probably, yeah, and that's so. So you have a big impact than your local neighbour who has no audience, and that's why you get congratulations for speaking out. Whereas the majority of the mainstream just went along with it, or if they disagreed, they don't speak against it. They're too cowardly. Yeah, I mean you know? that's the thing. You have if you cool. if you want to influence people, you have to be brave. Because because Kiwis yeah. are a great knocking machine. You stick your head above the parapet. Uh, you're effective at what you're doing. You get walloped. And I got walloped in 2014. I got walloped hard. Big time. It, but I'm just looking at Elon Musk internationally, you know, speaking up for free speech. And look how he's getting walloped by the US government and so on. Yeah. You know, like, thank God he's so brave. Well, that's and, right. You know, he's rich enough to be able to do that. Because if someone wasn't doing it in his powerful position, it'd be so hard to fight. Well, it's easy to be you know, compliant. If you look at Bill Gates, for example, he's got less money than, than Elon Musk, but he doesn't have any bravery. He he uses sneaky underhand methods to achieve his aims, whereas Elon Musk is saying, well, you know what? I don't like the way Twitter's run. I'm going to buy it. He, that's exactly what he did. Is He said that, I'm going to buy it. And then the board all quit, and then he bought it, and he's, that everyone said it's going to fall over. It's not going to work. It's going to be terrible. None of those things came true. Not one yeah, single fired, thing came true. Uh, he fired half the staff. Fired half the staff. Or whatever. Yeah. Or, wasn't it more? It's insane more. Amount, and it's still running it was, fine. Yeah, it was like two-thirds of the staff, and he said, we can do this better. And it is. It's much better. Now, a whole lot of lefties, the lefty suck holes have left, you know, Twitter. Good. Go away. Go somewhere else. We want free speech here, and we want not to be restricted on what we say and think. And Elon Musk is a is a hero. I mean, he's he's got his foibles. He's an he's international got some, hero for free speech. Yeah, he's 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 a bit wonky and a bit wet uh, wet on some things, but by and large, he he knows what he wants to achieve. He says he's going to do this, and then sets about doing it. And you know, we've kind of got a government that does that now. We, we've they've told us what they're going to do. And now they're doing it. And they're doing it. And the media and, and the vested saying. interests are wailing, you know, like air raid sirens, wailing. So we, we know the government's doing things because of the hue and cry and the, the waterworks and the run on tissues, uh, you know, all of those sorts of things. So we know that they're doing a fantastic job because of the wailing. When the wailing stops. Yeah, you know they're over the target, mate, when the wailing's loudest. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So the, the, the and, great thing is, is we can talk about this without without fear or favour anymore. We don't have to couch our terms. Cancel. We don't have to. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't have to Getting worry about being cancelled. Your payments not made, or yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they'll tr so, they'll still try, but you know, um, I think the world's or New Zealand and and certainly the world's heading in the in the right direction, and we've just got to keep this up. And if we do this for six years or or nine years hopefully 12 years of embracing this freedom to have courageous discourse or even rude discourse. But if we embrace this, then we'll get New Zealand back on track. And I hate to use Christopher Luxon's uh, terminology, but, but uh, you know, I think we're, on, we're starting to head in the right direction. And I'll be honest, I've been real impressed with Luxon. I mean, I, yeah, I bit, have been, I've been too, you know, and, I, and I'm sceptical. Exactly. I was sceptical. I was like, wow, well, is this going to be much different? But, it might be the support of Winston and, and David, but he he's stood up to the pressure and he I, I, I really admire him. I think he's done fantastic. He's you know, he's could be a real great prime minister. So well, he, he could so be. anyway, that that was my happy place in this year. It was mm. like just such a refresh, eh? <laughs> so what do you want for next year? More of the same. Well, it's the, yeah, more of the same. And I also would like to see interest rates come down. I, like, honestly, in my industry, it's getting slaughtered on construction. I'm seeing people really desperate, trying to find work for staff, people with no work, you know, building supplies down. You know, remember 18 months ago or two years ago, you couldn't buy your board now. You can get it easily. You know, it's just it's done. We have to see interest rates come down next year to to keep the building industry. Otherwise, we'll lose our whole industry to Australia. 
you know, like lose all the good staff. And we need some shovel ready projects to get going. And so we just don't lose all our roading crews and experience to Australia again. Mm. So that's what that's really what I generally like to see next year is to see interest rates come down on more of the same direction yeah. of travel. Yeah, I think I think everybody wants to see interest rates come down. Um, you know, it's been out of control yeah. um, with a profligate spendthrift well, that's what uh, finance it. minister. Spray, spraying money around has caused the inflation and we've had to put it out. But it's, it's hurt, it hurts young families and people with mortgages. Yeah, it's like the reserve. Old rich people. It's like the Reserve Bank put the printing presses for money up on the top floor of the of the Treasury Building, and then just opened a window and <laughs> sprayed cash out willy nilly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, by getting the inflation under control, we'll get the cost of living back into the zone, and then hopefully see interest rates come down and and pe- see people starting to do stuff and and grow their business and grow the economy again. Right? Like, we don't. Yeah, we have to see that next year. That's my big wish. Well, hopefully Not we will. So, you know, anyway, Jimmy, yeah. thanks heaps for participating in Cam's Buddies. The, the listeners love this segment. They love all you guys. And um, you know, I really appreciate you participating. And uh, hopefully you'll be here again next year when we kick off the new year. Oh, I will be. Thanks, Cam. It's my pleasure to rant and rave once a week. So, yeah, I, I wish you anyway, and your family. Yeah, I wish you and your family a great Christmas, a very Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. Thank you very much. Same to you. Okay, Jimmy. Good afternoon. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, the last Cam's Buddies of the year. Miles? Good afternoon. How are you today, Cam? Uh, I, you know me. I'm always good. But as I said to Jack when he said the same thing, it doesn't matter how how shit I feel. I'm always going to say fantastic because no one actually cares how you feel. When they ask that, they're just being pleasant. Yeah, but listen, the bottom line is let's focus on what um, went well in the past year. So being pleasant, yeah, that counts. That's exactly what I want to talk to you about, actually, instead of the usual fear. Um, I'm interested to know what you thought went well in the year for you. It could be personal. It could be family orientated. It could be politics, could be business. Uh, and then the second thing I want to ask you is what are your hopes for next year? What would you like to see for next year? Okay, well, I, I've been thinking long and hard about this, and I, I, I thought that the biggest positive thing for me um, was the whole election and the result of the election. I know that might sound a bit uh, sort of twee, but the reality is, the um, three parties announced their coalition agreements for the first time in a long time I've felt quite um, positive without that boom that uh, was seemed to gather over our heads much, much more than normal especially during the Ardoon and the Hipkins years, so yeah that really made a difference the, the election really made a difference and the real difference is now seeing small things happen exactly as the uh, politicians say they're going to happen. And, you know, a good one for me would be the stupidity of the spending of the cycle lanes. That looks like um, that's going to be flushed away. So fantastic news there. Yeah, my, one of my um, – I was talking earlier to Paul, and he said one of the best things this year has been – you know, our regular Monday lunches with a great bunch of guys. And, you know, I've got to echo that and say, you know, that's kept me sane and on track. And, you know, we talk about all sorts of things. Sometimes it can be pretty um, grim, the things that we're talking about when people are facing particular issues or whatever. Um, But that group of guys, uh, you know, that we meet for lunch. And I said to Paul, I think it's nearly, it's over 20 years we've been meeting. You know, there's, there's new people that have come along and, you know, we met during the lockdowns and we broke all the rules and we we did all of those things. But that that group gives me a huge amount of pleasure just for the mateship. And, you know, you've been coming along a couple of years. What, how have you found it? Well, I quite like the fact that an ability to uh, bear your soul, talk mm. about issues, and get a 
good feedback on some of the issues. And, you know, people are honest and forthright, and I like that. Um, it's It can be difficult, especially when you're facing some of the trickier things, but the real pleasure is that I really enjoy everyone's company and I enjoy the tidbits and um, tales that they bring along um, each week. So, yeah, and I, I would say that having social contact like that, we can talk about things that might be um, worrying you and also things that have gone really well. That makes a really big difference. Yeah, I mean, exactly. We, we, it's just so refreshing, and you know that with the group of people around the table that there's decades upon decades upon decades of experience and there are all sorts of different problems, and we, we're able to, you know, get some advice or to get some clarity on particular issues. And some of the issues that we've been talking about with, with the guys are, you know, pretty harrowing, some of them. Um, Correct. But, but Correct. Um, you know... I think it's a, a. I think there's a lot of merit in, especially blokes, finding a group of blokes that can get together, that can be relied on, and will die in a ditch for each other. Correct. I, I'm incredibly uh, grateful for for the friendship of those guys. I'm incredibly grateful for the support you've given me this year too, Miles. Yep, and vice versa. I recall several times where you have gone well out of your way. And I guess that's the nature of um, friendship. You try and look after each other in ways um, that you can, that you're able to do. And sometimes it's small things, um, you know, um, washing your neighbour's windows when she's elderly and can't do them herself. Mm. Um, you know, small things like that really matter to people. And I, I believe, I'm a firm believer that, Charity begins at home, and, and by charity, I use the broadest definition of the word. Mm. You know, look around to see how you can help people around you rather than, um, you know, donate to some unknown or far off um, land for a, for a cause that's non specific. I firmly believe, you know, look around you, help, help, and talk to the people around you. It's, it's really a, a good thing to do. And what are your hopes for next year? Um, well, I think next year is going to be a really fascinating year. I think that, you know, we are going to get the opportunity to build and um, grow in ways that will be unrestricted by the, um, by the red tape. I think David Seymour is going to have a crack at cutting some of these regulations. Mm. You know, I'm particularly interested in regulations around um, building because I've got a lot of good mates who are building. And when I hear, you know, that people have have spent up to $200,000 on their development before they can even break ground, mm. I mean, I start to wonder where is all that money going and why are all those bureaucrats holding up progress? So that's the first thing I... On a personal level, a lot of my family are farmers and they've been doing it hard. I'd like a shout out to the farmers. They've been doing a, a stunning job. Um, they keep our country afloat. I'm a big fan of farming and, you know, I think these SNAs, these um, freshwater regulations, they've got to go. The stupidity of planting um, pine trees on productive land has got to go and we are looking I think very positive with the likes of um, Andrew Hoggard and ACT and um, you know I think National has got a bit of a farming backbone I think they may have lost it a bit but I think they're rediscovering that so I'm really looking forward to some positive supportive moves from the politicians to our farmers. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so on a personal note, I think I'd quite like to see my um, daughter, she wants to go into farming, funnily enough, and 
personally, I'd just like to say that, you know, there are some farming, excellent farming cadetships out there. Mm. But when I look around, I'm horrified at how few cadetships or farm training places there are in New Zealand. And, you know, compare that with, say, for example, building or mechanics where there's a lot of opportunity for apprenticeships. Farmers seem to be getting the short shift. So, yeah, um, my daughter's looking at getting into a farming um, cadetship or apprenticeship, however you want to say it. Yep. And there are precious few places available. And, you know, maybe I should say that one of my hopes is that those cadetships and um, apprenticeships for farming get a lot more focus from the government to see what they can do to help. Mm. Yeah, I'm really pleased to see um, your daughter develop this year. You know, it's been uh, an amazing journey in just one short year, you know, for her. And it's so pleasing to see her, you know, growing into and knowing at her age exactly what she wants to do and what what her passion is for work. And uh, seeing that excitement build in her um, over this year um, as she's been doing that has been really pleasing. Yeah, I I think there's something about work and I think that, you know, if I could say that I really believe um, that getting people out of um, benefits and back to work helps with incredible uh, uh, self-belief and and builds esteem and I think you can be really misled and I really believe that any sort of work is is good, gets people out of the house, Uh, gets people into a new social circle, gets people talking, gets people working, and and people feel better about themselves. And I'd like to see some of what I believe was Labor's biggest mistake, and that was that huge increase in those benefits. I'd like to see some of that whittled down. And, you know, I'm I'm seeing that the 90-day legislation is going to be part of that. So... You know, I, I really believe that work helps people no matter what, and I really feel for young people. I think that they may have been a bit lost during the COVID years. They may not have gone to school. They may have uh, gone off school. I think there needs to be some real stewardship shown in education, and I think um, Act Charter Schools policy might, might actually deliver something that's a, a long overdue in this country. You know, Miles, I, I have to thank you for participating in in uh, in Cam's Buddies. Uh, you you get lots of comments from, particularly from the staff of Reality Check Radio. They say, "Oh, we love Miles," or or you know, it's amazing the number of people who say that. So, uh, look, I really appreciate you participating in it, and uh, hopefully, you'll be back next year for new Cam's Buddies, and uh, we can keep on you know, making a real difference to the listeners out there. They love this segment. So, um, yeah, really appreciate it. And uh, and I wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And, you know, maybe you and I need to go and shoot something in the uh, in the, <laughs> in the holidays. Um, you know, my freezer's a bit empty, so uh, exactly. I could do with filling that up again. Exactly. Look, um, Merry Christmas to all the RCR listeners. I really think that you guys are the backbone of New Zealand. I like being able to share my thoughts. I'm not sure that everybody agrees with what I say, but, you know, I'd like to say that it's worthwhile having um, this sort of segment where I'm a pretty ordinary bloke and I like I think about ordinary things. I know that. But I'd like to wish everyone a very extraordinary Merry Christmas. And I think that... People, if you if you are thinking about past, don't focus on the future. Focus on your family. Focus on um, treating yourself, um, doing something nice for yourself this Christmas, because you know you guys you really deserve it. And I echo that too, Miles. So thank you so much for participating, and uh, we'll catch up in the new year. Merry Christmas, Cam. Merry Christmas to you too. Aren't my buddies just awesome? I am so blessed to have such a great bunch of mates to share anything with. And of course, they share these things with you as well. 
I wish all my buddies a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Tell us who you think is the best of Cam's buddies and why by emailing inbox at realitycheck.radio or text to 2057. Thanks for tuning in to RCR, Reality Check Radio. Do you like what you're listening to or dislike what you're listening to? Either way, we want to hear from you. Get in touch with us now. You can text us with your message to 2057. That's 2057. Or email us at inbox at realitycheck.radio. We'd love to hear from you. So connect with us today.